Um, if you own both, then you'll comment and you'll feel different. If you only own a gold wing, then you're going to be pro gold wing. If you only own a road glide, a street glide, or Harley Davidson, then you're going to be pro Harley Davidson. And so I've been doing this for years. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Chris from Chris Glides and Low Rise, and today I'm out and we stopped at All American Harley Davidson in Hughesville, Maryland, and we're just out on some bikes. I say some bikes because I rode something different today, and I'm um, riding with some guys that are on Harleys, and I'm on the Gold Wing, and uh, just trying to see um, when we take some of these twisty roads and on the straightaways and things like that, um, how the bikes all compare and handle and things like that. So you'll see on the video. As we take some of these roads, you know, how they fare, how they do, and uh, how comfortable, I'll talk about how comfortable I was after the uh, video. So just hang out and ride with us. So as you can see on the first bike, the uh, rider is gonna be on a uh, 114. He's got a uh, street glide and I think it's a, might be a street glide uh, special. And then uh, this is a street glide limited 114 Milwaukee 8. Got a nice setup here. As you can see on the tags, everyone is a member of the same fraternity <laughs> so we're just out here riding and then the third bike here is going to be this 23 honda gold wing dct with airbag you guys seen it at the house and um i haven't had it out on the road i might actually uh have to put gas in this thing today <laughs> so all right guys i'm gonna go ahead into the store let's see what they're doing in there Hi, how you doing? Good. Wow, look at this thing. This one here is a nice paint scheme. It's called Tangerine Dream. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Those are the specs. One of my buddies stopped in and saw this bike and he wanted to trade his in for it, but he pretty much has the same bike. It's just this one has a paint job on it and uh, his doesn't. His actually has bars and uh, heated grips and my buddy's has pipes and stuff on his. So I told him, I said, man, just paint your bike and you'll have one just like it. Um, that one has a single side shifter. I mean, not single side, but single shifter, no heel toe. He has heel toe. And um, this thing here is looking nice. It looks like a road glide and it is one of the new series as you can see right there with 
the uh, paint scheme is the 117 and it's the Roguelide ST but I think it's called the Fast something I can't remember um, it was on the site let's see this one is, is all the details it is a Roguelide ST and it's a pretty good price I had one of these um, Sportster S's and um, these things are fast. I just couldn't get over the uh, sound of the Revolution Max engine and um, they have a separate seat column to go on the back but if you touch this pipe at all man it is burning all of everything off of you. I touched it with my glove and that thing pretty much singed my glove so this thing is fast though. It is extremely fast. I just couldn't get used to the uh, forward controls, but they are, you can move the controls to make controls. And I think if I had changed it, I would have ended up keeping that bike. So. one of the uh, electrics this is the original one of the Harley Davidson live wires it is not the live wire one it is the original it has the one HD VIN number which is um, unique if you want one that has the Harley um, badging and stuff on there that's that's the difference is if you get one of these year models you can still have the Harley badging the Harley VIN number I believe it has um, Harley Davidson tires and everything else, but the live wire that I used to have was a blast, and um, it was it was almost one of my favorite bikes. There's the uh, Pan Americas, and um, the Pan Americas is also a bike that has the Revolution Max engine. It looks like this one is pre-owned. I can see by the someone putting or installing the um, different hand guards on this one. And it already has the uh, mesh wheels and the nice knobby tires. This one already has the highway lights on it and has the uh, skid plate on the bottom. I don't think they changed the exhaust out. They may have and then um, maybe put the original back on, but I do see they have the exhaust um, bar on it. And, um, they've changed out some of the uh, foot controls so yeah this thing is uh, done up they have risers on it and everything so this bike seen some off-road time I could tell I like it I like it let me see I wonder how much this thing is see I keep going back to it this was um, also another one of my favorite bikes Wow 1995 I liked it, but I didn't like it enough to buy it twice. I ended up buying that live wire I had twice, so that says a lot. Just trying to see if I can notice anything else about this one. I'm wondering why they changed out. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't, so. Um, so we're riding and um, I didn't have my headset hooked up and uh, we're going to try to get some assistance. So the guys in uh, parts are going to help us pair our helmets and um, so we, we decided we're going to bring the helmets in versus do it outside because it's nice and cool in here. So, But uh, yeah. That feeling when everybody else is on Harleys and you are on something different. But uh, for the review, it's a good day to uh, ride this thing and kind of see what it's capable of, you know? Thanks. Oh, yeah, it's not the weekend. Every day is the weekend for me. <laughs>
Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm back and uh, just came back from a ride on the Honda Goldwing. Had an excellent time. Um, I did some excellent back road riding, um, some excellent high speed riding and um, just felt very comfortable all throughout the ride. Felt very confident about the ride, the trip I was on and everything else. Um, bike did excellent with uh, gas mileage, fuel economy, I guess that's what you want to call it. Um, I like the fact that this bike out the box is just absolutely, it's perfect. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Um, I would challenge many of the other Harley owners to actually get one for a week, rent one, ride one. It's, a, it's an excellent bike um, for, what it, for what it comes with for that sticker price. A few other things about the bike was, I just like the overall sales experience. When I purchased the Honda, the sales experience is way better than any Harley Davidson that I purchased and I uh, purchased from different dealerships. Um, but there wasn't any pressure tactics. And as far as the warranty, it was just yes or no. Do you want the warranty or do you not want the warranty? It wasn't like a bunch of choices where you had to choose between tire protection and this and that and other. I think the Harley sheet has like um, choices from left to right, whether you get this or not and how much it increases your monthly payment. Um, also with Honda, um, the dealership that I went to, they had the price tag on the on the bike. As you remember when I, I made the first video, the price tag was already on the bike. So you knew how much it was gonna cost. It comes standard with a center stand and you have to actually add on a center stand on a Harley, if it, if it could even have one. I know my Harley Pan America had a center stand and um, just so many other features that, you know, you just don't even think about that it comes with. The only thing that I did have to add, actually I didn't have to, but that I added because um, I did want to ride and somebody told me to, you know, recommend it that I do was, added a skid plate and for, for protection because the engine is actually under there. And that was the only design flaw that I could think of that might not even be a flaw. It might be made like this so when you crash, the engine um, falls underneath the bike and then out and away. So by adding that pan, I might have done something that I wasn't supposed to. I mean, it may just be designed that way for crash purposes, um, considering it does come with an airbag, which was an option. You could pay less and not get the airbag, but why not have an airbag, you know, and have it and not need it versus need it and not have it. So um, there was just several features that this bike came with that you don't need um, that just included. Um, for instance, I mean, just like the, the stereo sound, um, you know, with the speakers all around that I didn't have to add. And um, the windshield that goes up and down the air vent. Yes, that has a big windshield that it comes with and an air vent, but like these things actually are automated. And um, I like that. I like the fact that you can either use your buttons here or there, or you can use the buttons right, you know, right up front when you have big gloves on and you need to use larger buttons. Um, I like the fact that this comes on automatically in neutral and you can just put it in drive and or you can put it in reverse and you can do a forward crawl or a reverse. Forward crawl meaning that you don't have to do the duck walk and scoot like this does it for you. I mean, who would have thought of that? The other thing is this comes with a remote that actually opens the trunk. <laughs> I mean, that is insane. Um, and also you can push the button for audible alarm and I don't know if you've ever had to replace a Harley battery, but this actually, if you hold the button in, it actually turns the remote off so your battery doesn't die. So, I mean, that's amazing. And then it's got this like lacquer finish. It's really nice, but this is also a key. So it actually has a key just in case the battery dies. 
you can actually use the key. And there's a whole process in doing that, but it's the same process as if you were in a car and you needed to use the emergency key versus if you, if that happens to you on a Harley, um, what's convenient about the Harley is you have to use um, a pin number and you can start the bike. And I don't know if this has a pin number or not, but at least if you lose a key fob on a Harley, you can put the pin number in and you'll be on your way. You can ride without the key. Um, unless you forget to program a pin number and you have the generic pin and someone steals your Harley. So just a lot of features that they didn't have to add that it came with. Um, I really like that emergency brake feature. And like for the engine guards, like I didn't know what this rubber piece was here. That's actually your engine guard or, you know, and, and even right here. I, it just it just doesn't look like what it is. I thought it was maybe like a step or something like that, but no, it's actually, if the bike tips over, it's to protect the, the engine and also to protect the, uh, the rear of the bike. So just some um, features that it didn't have to come with, but it did. Um, I know that you can add all these extra lights and things like that. I'm just not a light person. I don't want to be taking chances of my batteries being drained. I like the extra LED lights, but I don't like all the extra like um, colored lights and things like that. I've had them and I might do it again, but I know that this, you can take these big large reflectors off and you could probably change that out and put, you know, like some other lighting and stuff on there. But, um, with this bike, I'm pretty confident that if someone was about to like run into the side of me or this, that, and the other, I can maneuver out of the way like really quick and fast and easy. I don't have to downshift or upshift. I just crank the throttle and move and, uh, and the bike is out. I just really like the design of the light up front. It, it really has a sports bike look until you get to the tour pack. And the models that don't have the tour pack on it, I mean, they don't look bad. I picked a different color, but it doesn't look bad. But as far as suspension, man, when you're riding, you can see those, the suspension moving up and down and things like that. And this bike is just, just so comfortable. Lots of moving parts that create like the perfect smooth ride. I just can't say enough about it. And, um, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. If, you know, you can't find as many things to say about one bike, then try it out and see. And, you know, maybe you'll change your perspective on, on how you think about certain things. Um, to me, it's a no brainer. I mean, if you don't want to do as much work and you want to just ride and enjoy the ride, this is a bike for you. I mean, some people will say, man, be a man, you know, stop being a you know, pussy, get something, get a real man bike or get a real this or a real that. And, you know, why would you own a trike? And I, I really don't care what people think. Well, actually, I take it back. I do care. Um, so I take it in consideration. But, you know, I'm just ready to actually, um, you know, have something to say in return as to why. So I can articulate lots of reasons for why I ride what I ride, even though I don't have to, but I can justify the reasons why I feel the way I do about certain machines and, you know, what they're capable of and like why this one's my favorite. Even though I don't like the look cosmetically, this thing just adrenaline wise, it just really moves. So the, um, the entire time that I've owned this, um, it sat in the garage for the majority of the time. And a lot of the time I was, you know, on my Harleys and things like that. And the Harley culture is very addictive. Even if your bikes are having trouble, they don't work, they're in the shop, you have to get, you know, maintenance a lot more than many other bikes in the market. Um, it's just an addictive culture with the clothing, the brand name, all the different customizing things that you can do to it. And um, I enjoy it. And with the Gold Wing, um, I'm not into, I haven't done anything customized to customize it. Um, I'll just ride it the way it is. And it's not that 
Um, you can't because there's guys out here that do a lot of different things with the lights and all these other different features, but I kind of just like it just the way it is. Um, it doesn't have the big exhaust sound and I like that. I like the quiet sound of the bike. I like hearing the engine rev and um, when I'm on it, it just reminds me of being on a sports bike the way it handles. And um, I got the bike um, mainly based upon a comment where this guy was saying that um, he would tear me up if we got out on the road and I was racing him um, on this bike versus a Goldwing. And I was like, yeah, right. And I actually believe him now. Um, I've got this thing out on sports mode. I waited till I broke it in. And um, this thing is an absolute beast. But to call it a motorcycle, I mean, it's on two wheels, but I mean, it's just an unfair advantage of how powerful this thing really is. And, um, you know, I get, I used to tease people a lot, talk crap about the going until I actually bought one and rode it myself and, um, you know, had to sell myself on it. And it just sat and sat and sat in the garage because I felt guilty about buying it, being so dedicated to Harley. Um, Harley is a very addictive brand, um, but to all fairness, um, if you want to compare the two bikes, you know, for them to make a touring bike that's just out the box with everything, um, you know, that's just not something that Harley gives the owners a choice where you can buy various options when you look at engines. You can get the 107, you can get the 114, you can get the 117. Now you can get the 121, you can get the 131 or the 135. But with this, you know, you just get the straight, you know, six and um, this, you know, huge monstrous engine. Um, oftentimes I did find myself putting it in touring mode versus the sports mode when I wanted to uh, have a lower RPM, calmer ride, but I did put it back in sports mode. And then there was this paddle mode feature that I used to, uh, to do the um, downshift right there and then the upshift with that paddle right there. And um, I just had a lot of fun with it today. I like the fact that um, it has this sort of like, well, it is, it's like an emergency brake right there. And they didn't have to do it, but they did. So, whereas this bike, you can't leave it in first gear because once the kickstand is down, it's in neutral versus, you know, this bike, you can leave it in first gear, you can put the kickstand down and it's, it's not gonna move unless somebody hits the clutch. But yeah, having an emergency brake right there is very similar to a car, it's just like a car. And um, I like the luggage space. I was able to put two helmets in here today. I went inside a restaurant while I was with the fellas and uh, threw a helmet on each side. I still had an um, IFAT kit for uh, individual first aid kit. And um, I had my rain suit, but I ended up just putting a rain suit in the back on the side. One of the things that, um, some of the other features I like, I like the fact that you can have the uh, windshield go up and down to the rider height that you want. So when I didn't want the wind in my face, I was able to lift the windshield all the way up. And to me, um, that was that was priceless. Um, I like when you turn the bike off, the windshield just goes back down and it'll go back up to memory, as well as like, it comes with a full size heated seat and full size, you know, look at how long those grips are but full size heated hand grips. And um, those are turned on or on based on memory as well. Um, so it just, I am impressed with it. I took like, a, I don't know how many day challenge to see if I would like it over uh, various Harley models. These are just three Harleys, but I've owned maybe four or five other Harley models within the past two to three years. And um, I love them, they're addictive. And you can get really caught in the culture. You can get involved in um, these hog groups. And then next thing you know, you're buying boots and pants and jeans and shirts and getting tattoos and buying um, toe, hitch, toe hitch bumper emblems and everything else. And you just don't see that in the, um, 
I don't see it in the Honda Goldwing world, unless I'm just too new to the Honda Goldwing world. But to me, I like wearing um, the American Harley brand. It's just more of a of a tradition, I guess, to really see um, someone with like Harley clothes or Harley emblems and things like that. I guess it's just the American icon, whereas like, um, you know, this is not because it's not a, it's not American. It's a Honda. But um, I do feel like at higher speeds and different maneuvers, I do feel a lot safer on this bike. Um, I like the various modes. So the Road Glide Limited does have a rain mode as well. This has a rain mode, eco mode, touring mode. And, um, you know, this is just the way I have it set up is pretty much, um, it just goes. <laughs> so, but I mean, you can put it in um, uh, rain mode and it also has, um, what other mode, tracks control mode versus like for this, it has like the, uh, the, the wet mode and turn uh, mode, stuff like that. Um, I like the fact that with Harley, when you're doing customizing, um, you could change the bars out. And I'm sure like with this, you could probably change I don't think you could change the bars, but I've seen something about risers or something like that, but I like this the way it is. Um, they have these foot peg type deals that it comes with and um, they're pretty wide. I do see where you can get um, where they sell like the footboard and then they have like the extra pad right here and then you can get somewhere along here, you can get like the highway peg, but I pretty much rode around all day and didn't feel like I needed to put my feet up anywhere. I like how they designed the uh, passenger foot peg to just blend right in with the bike. You wouldn't even know it was there. And um, I like that. Either I don't know, but I wish there was an easy option um, to just remove the rear tour pack so I can go for a more sportier ride, a sportier looking ride versus having the tour pack on. It didn't feel like the tour pack slowed me down, but when I'm on the road glide, when I take the tour pack off, I feel way lighter and I feel more aerodynamic because you are catching wind and it's probably catching wind on this too. So with this road glide with the 131 stage four, um, with the loudness and the speed and everything, I really, really, really feel it but it's a different kind of rush that you feel on the uh, the go wing when you ride it. It's a power speed rush. Like you feel like you're in a Tesla or a rocket ship or you're launching on an electric bike. Um, the group that I was with today, the guy didn't know how I was able to take off so fast. And um, I showed him that it's an automatic. I don't have a clutch. I don't have... Um, a foot shifter and he was like oh okay I get it um, I like the fact that you could do everything with your you know you don't have to keep your left hand on the the the, um, the bars in order to do any clutching and all that so um, you know it's good to balance but like I could do things with my left foot or my, my right hand that I normally can't do because they're busy to where I'm like normally multitasking or in a way kind of juggling what I'm doing with my hand so I do like that. Um, the compartments, I don't have like the compartments up front like I do on my road glide, but um, I think I only put like my toe pads in one side and then maybe my extra um, camera batteries on the other side. So I'm not really missing much because I have this compartment here and I'll put like my uh, camera batteries and stuff on this side. So um, storage for storage, I just don't have the, the storage in like a left side compartment like I normally would, but um, it's probably empty in there now. If I open it, it'll probably be empty. I do like the deep storage capacity in the side bags versus like how it opens like this. I thought I wouldn't like it because I felt like um, I wouldn't, it just, I'm used to dropping stuff in instead of just sitting it right in and being able to pull it out instead of like dropping my hand down to dig things out. So, um, so I like that. And um, when I put this rain suit in my saddlebag there, it 
you know, I think it takes up probably about the same amount of room or I have the same amount of room remaining. Oops, almost dropped the phone. And you already seen the, the room here and the, and the other side is about the same. So I like the way that it hydraulically closes, but bike for bike, um, they're just in a different class. Um, I know, I mean, Harley, if they really wanted to, could they make a bike like this to compete with the Goldwing? Sure they could, but you would probably get the low amount of buyers the same way as you do get the low amount of buyers for the Gold Wing. And I'm sure they have a, a, a pretty good amount of buyers, but relative to this being like the only model. So let's see, how many model bikes does Honda have that is a touring bike? I think this might be the only one. I don't know if you want to consider the other ones. Uh, I mean, I guess they are. They have bags and stuff that you can put on, but... Um, if you had one model to build, I mean, I guess this would be it. So to compare to say, you know, what's better than the other one, um, the way it comes and for the price and everything, the way it rides, the comfort and out the box to where I didn't feel like I had to buy one single accessory, then the Goldwing is the better bike. But if I wanna put um, customizing and different looks and you know being street cool and having the amount of accessories available then i would say the harley is the better bike but far as reliability i'm gonna go with the gold wing 100 as far as uh bikes being in the shop or reliability because of the service intervals that you would work on these machines versus uh the uh the harleys um People always say, well, why do you have so many bikes? Because I always plan for one to be in the shop or have to work on one. And I need, or I don't need, but I would like to have a backup. For instance, I'm going to Myrtle Beach next week. I wanted to take this. I can't because the tune is not out. And um, could I ride it without the tune? Sure, I probably could, but then I'm pretty sure the engine is gonna be gumped up and damaged and things like that. And um, that's not gonna be good for a new bike. Um, I could take the low rider and I don't have the tour pack, but I could put a duffel bag on the back. And um, I'm just probably not gonna be comfortable on that long ride as much as I would be on one of these touring bikes. So then that leaves it down to, which one of these two will I take to Myrtle Beach? Well. It's pretty much gonna be a primary all Harley event, right? And um, it's gonna boil down to what I'm gonna be comfortable with riding down there at that distance, what I'll be more comfortable with. And um, I'll be more comfortable on the Gold Wing, but since I'll be going down there to a place that's gonna be primarily dominated with Harleys, I'm most likely gonna ride on Grady and put the tour pack on and, um, you know, put extra bags and stuff on there so that I could take my luggage. But um, I'm gonna tell y'all, you know, once you crack open a Harley engine and I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about this and people will say, well, I changed mine up and I never had any problems. Well, I would say for my experience, cracking open an engine far as like replacing you're replacing it with a 131 where it came with a 114 or 117, whatever, and putting cams and putting breathers and headers and all that stuff on, it's just opening up a can of worms. And far as distance and, you know, you knowing or having the same uh, faith in your reliability on your trip is a whole nother story. So I would rather take Judy down being stock than to take Grady down being modified. Um, I haven't had any mechanical breakdown issues with Grady, but um, I just don't, I don't feel, I don't know, maybe I'll just ride it and then for content, see if the bike makes it back there and back fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just don't know why this 131 likes to live in the oil range of 
close to low. Um, if you guys are having the same issue, let me know. But once I change it up, if you put it, if you put the regular oil levels in, it likes to either blow it out the air breather or blow it out the pipes or spit it back into the, the engine with the tubes that go from the air breather back into the engine. I don't know why they, the bike is designed to do that. I don't know if all motorcycles are designed to do that, but it beats me. But um, I just, maybe I have a lot to learn and um, that's most likely normal, but I don't know. I've stuck it in the shop a bunch of times because I was concerned about oil issues. There's no dripping, there's no spilling, there's no oil anywhere, but I just don't have that, that those problems with this machine right here. So, what the heck is that? It's an ugly sounding helicopter. So, I'm getting that ugly, dark, filthy exhaust film and um you know this bike is loud as hell and i love it it's cool but um some people say that you can see like every now and then a little bit of uh black smoke coming out not not a lot but just a little bit and i think that's oil burning or something and um they can smell like fumes i've had it in the shop plenty of times and they can't seem to find anything wrong. I've had the uh, valve seals replaced and um, what else? <sighs> yeah, I think I think it was just the, the valve seals that they had to uh, fix. And um, they said that would stop it from drinking and burning so much oil. But uh, I've just been riding it, man. And uh, hopefully everything's good. Um, it's just things that occur when you have that 131. Um, I think one time I came and uh, cut the bike on and started it and it was just sounding really loud and uh, I don't know, something was going on with the plugs and I had the performance plugs in, but one of the plugs were bad and they replaced some other part, but the shop did an excellent job getting me the bike back right away and didn't charge me much. I think I got charged like $80 to do whatever they had to do. And, um, and so, yeah, but... When I first got the 131, I had the uh, exhaust that it came with and the 131 kit. And my buddy was riding behind me and he was like, hey man, I could see like, um, you know, glowing orange pipes on the right side. Um, well, that's because where the, about right here, where they had the, uh, I think it's a catalytic converter, I don't know, that just gets real hot before it, the energy or the exhaust burns onto the other pipe over there. but. So I thought something was bad, so I took it in, and um, it just turns out that's the way it was. So once you put headers on and it breathes all the way, and then you put a breather on, at that point, I wasn't aware that the Screaming Eagle tuner would not work for the bike anymore. So you have to get a aftermarket tuner, which is dumb. And um, I just kept having issues until I actually got it tuned with an aftermarket tuner, but basically when you do that, you void the warranty, but you take care of all the other problems. So they gave me um, a techno research tune. And so that's what I have on the bike now. No issues, but I just, man, I just wanna make it down there without breaking down. Not that it ever has. The bike only has 5,000 miles. Um, and it runs like a champ. But um, once you step into this realm here, you feel that comfort and you know, you don't have the issues and it's just silky smooth, then you know, you just develop a, a different sense of comfort in, the, in a motorcycle. I mean, I guess it's the same way for cars and things like that too. So we'll see. Well, anyway, um, I've talked to you guys about 20 minutes on that topic, and uh, that's going to pretty much do it for my review on the Honda Gold Wing. It is a better, it is a better bike um, for what you compare, for all that you compare as far as um, comfort and as far as performance, as far as uh, the suspension that it comes with, as far as the lighting far as the, the braking ability to uh, brake the bike, 
far as, um, I mean, hell, even, like when I say lighting, I mean, look, it comes with <laughs> other lights just already on there. Just overall design. Um, some people will say like, this is definitely uglier than the front of that, but some people will say, I mean, Harleys are ugly in the front, but the majority of the people associate motorcycles with Harley. So that's a no-win battle. Um, they will say the looks of the Harley are better, but, um, and then the sound. The, the sound for Harley is an iconic sound. Um, I could spend about $2,000 to get another exhaust on here, but I'm not, because I like the way this sounds. So anyway, that's gonna do it for my review. Some people are gonna say, you know, who is this guy? What's his credibility? I'm just a guy who's owned, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 motorcycles. I've been riding since uh, 1998. Rode bikes, started riding bikes in Japan, and um, maybe had about seven or eight different types of motorcycles when I rode in Japan and learned a lot from uh, different people over there in their country when I rode. And I grew up around motorcycles, so um, I'm up to the challenge. So if there's another bike out on the market, like Indian or you know BMW, things like that, sure, I'm up to buy one and just kind of see, do a review on that too. But um, now that I've done the review, if you want to buy this Goldwing, then uh, give me a shout. Um, my email is um, on my page, uh, crystallizeandlowrise at gmail.com. And uh, let me know. It's only got like 500 miles or something on there. No more than 500. If that, let me see. But yeah, it, you can buy it now. It's for sale. Um, matter of fact, every bike in here is for sale. So <laughs> um, yeah, 427 miles. It's yours. Um, I will keep Grady because um, me and Grady have a special relationship, but if you wanna buy any of these bikes in here, they are up for grabs. I will sell them to you for pretty much what I owe the bank. So you have a 22 Lowrider S with everything on it. You know, all the different devices that I've installed from the, looking at the channel for a while. And um, hell, I'll even let this go. Cause I'm gonna buy the, um, I'm gonna get the CVO Road Glide in June, July, whenever that comes out. I'm gonna go ahead and try and order that. And um, if it comes and the bikes aren't sold, then I'll have three Road Glides. Um, I'm just not a Street Glide guy. I owned a Street Glide. I loved it, but as far as appearance, I'm more of a Road Glide guy. I don't like the elephant ear bike. The uh, Street Glide just reminds me of looking at the front of an elephant. And, um, you know, I'm not down in the bike. They're not, definitely not a bat wing, but, and this is definitely not a, a shark. Maybe a hammerhead shark, but, eh. But anyway, I'm just being negative right now. So I'm gonna go in, give me a drink of water, listen to more of these jets. Let's see what they got. That's going to do it for this episode, and uh, thanks for listening to uh, the last review of the two bikes. Um, I think in the first video episode, I um, answered and responded to a lot of comments as to uh, different aspects of um, what they felt about the bikes. And it was mainly going people who chimed in, and um, I'll tell you this. The last thing I'll say is, um, if you own both, then you'll comment and you'll feel different. If you only own a Goldwing, then you're gonna be pro Goldwing. If you only own a Road Glide, a Street Glide, or Harley Davidson, then you're gonna be pro Harley Davidson. And so I've been doing this for years, even with cars. So if there was two cars out, like a Mustang and a Camaro, then I even bought like one Mustang, one Camaro. If there was like, um, a Lamborghini against a Corvette, then I would buy the Lamborghini and then buy the Corvette too. So I always didn't listen to the hype. I just actually would um, get either vehicle and then I would make the determination myself and be non-biased. So there you have it. The winner 
of uh, the comparison to me is gonna be the 23 Honda Goldwing DCS with the airbag, um, the way it stands, just pretty much stock. And um, sorry for all my Harley subscribers. I know you wanted a different opinion, but um, I mean, Harley's still the champ. We're still gonna have more popularity on these cool ass looking bikes and um, still a brotherhood no matter where you go on these bikes. And then if you have a Goldwing, no matter where you go, you're always gonna have to prove whether you deserve to be, you know, riding with these guys or whether they deserve to be riding with you. So it's always gonna be a debate. And uh, <laughs> so no matter what you get, just ride. Two wheels, two wheels, except for those. <laughs> and then that's a whole nother bike community. But all right, guys. That's going to do it for this episode of Chris Clyde's and Low Rise. Thanks for watching. See you.